as the year goes on, I get closer and closer. So to learn new skills and to build new acumen. And if we can always touch, it's not. When you get that, then you get a lot more excited about being around children. Normal, in a sense, and with all of the changes, of course. Or how you can transform your own business. I'm developing the whole child, social, emotion. Traditional route of teaching young people. How to set boundaries because this little victim here needs to know how to. Doing very well. So they use that term. Sometimes expanded them to go up to 40 minutes. All of those things in education, of course, those things are important. Student is going to our heads and our lungs. The affirmations in the mirror for about two minutes. What did you do in order to get yourself going? This is amazing. It happens what seems to happen quite a bit in our school. For the families to come and they are uh, not really for the child or is it for us or for the parent. And doing new things for our brain. Who's orchestrating everything in this universe? Which parts of the brain? Uh, are you based on that map that we have see you with your smiling face at all thank you very much for allowing me to join you namaste to you my friends Hello. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you everyone who has joined us from different parts of the world to our early childhood global spotlight talk. My name is Atul. I'm a proud member and co-founder of this community. Also one of the founders of our preschool chain in the name of Wow Kids with more than 150 centers spread across 20 states in our country. Before we get started, if it, this is the first time that you've joined us, we at Early Childhood Global Mastermind Group do these live shows usually every Sunday, 9 p.m. my time, which is India Standard Time, which is 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. And the purpose and intent of these shows is to simply inspire all early childhood educators, parents, and all those who are passionate about children and learning. Also, let me tell you, if you have any question during the show, feel free to leave a comment we would be happy to take them up during the show. So today we have a very special guest, Dr. Sandeep Gupta from Bangalore, India. Hi, Dr. Sandeep. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me also. Yes, we also are joined with our very own Marianne Herman from United States. Hi, Marianne. Hello. All right, before we get started, let me introduce our guest for today, Dr. Sandeep Gupta. Dr. Sandeep Gupta is a senior pediatrician and a child care expert in Bangalore with vast experience in the field of child care. He currently practices at Aster CMI Hospital Bangalore and also founder of Baby Help. Dr. Sandeep Gupta has been treating newborn babies, toddlers, preteens and teenagers for more than 11 years now. He has expertise in dealing with common newborn problems child nutrition, childhood infections, growth and development, evaluation and management. He is also an American Heart Association Certified Pediatric and Advanced Life Support Trainer. Having treated more than 10,000 children and approximately 4,000 plus PICU cases, your child is in safe hands when you consult Dr. Gupta. Welcome Dr. Sandeep Gupta to our show tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Atul, for the kind introduction. Yes. So we are also joined by our my co-host for today, our very own Marion Herman, who is a founder of International <coughs> Infected Music with Mar from Florida, United States. She is also the moderator and backbone of this global community. Welcome, Mar, and over to you to take this forward. Thank you. It's always good to be here. And Dr. Gupta, thank you for coming back on. Um, really enjoyed the last show and people, you know, have been asking us questions. And so what we want to do today is, you know, have you clarify and um, further talk about some of the things we touched on last time. So the first thing and we want to focus 
mostly on the infants, but then go a little bit with the older kids because we do have some COVID related questions. And of course we know on parents' minds, it seems to be a lot of um, what they want to know about the most, you know, is my child safe? But before we get there, um, when a parent first has a child and they come to you for the first visit, what are their main concerns? What are the questions they ask you? So infants, basically when the parents first time bring their baby, the baby may be very small, just born, maybe a week or 10 days or two weeks older. So that time the parents will be very nervous. If the first time parents come, they will be very anxious about Babies feeding, then babies sometimes spits up the milk. Sometimes the stool pattern is not good. So these things they ask. So I'll, I'll address those things one by one. So first thing which parents uh, of the newborn baby, uh, they ask about feeding. So what I tell them is, see, you have to uh, allow your baby to breastfeed. In India, we promote breastfeeding till six months of age. According to World Health, World Health Organization, that is the best for the child. So that is one thing which we encourage. And breastfeeding is something which is a, a gradual process. It will not be one go for baby. It will not be one go for mother also. It is a gradual process where mother and baby bond together and mother learns to feed and baby learns to take the milk. So it is a slow process. It takes time. And at that point of time, as healthcare providers, as a newborn care uh, person, we need to uh, encourage the mothers and give them the confidence that they can do that. Because breastfeeding is having a lot of beneficial uh, qualities apart from the nutrition aspect. Nutrition wise, it is a complete nutrition for the baby till six months. Plus it has the benefit of providing good amount of immunity. What happens is as adults, we have acquired a lot of immunity through infections in our early life. So whatever the, our bodies contain the immune fighting capacity that gets transferred from mother's milk to the baby. So that is a very vital thing. Apart from that, uh, babies who are actually breastfed, they find to be they are found to be having a higher IQ and lesser chances of allergy and asthma or other kind of diseases like diabetes, obesity in later life. So they are both short term and long term benefits. So first of all, we encourage them to breastfeed and uh, we support them in that journey to learn how to uh, get the baby fed. Then there is small questions like baby stool color, what kind of uh, stool pattern baby will have. So these things. Basically, we tell that as long as your baby is passing stool, even once in three times and uh, maybe three, four times in a day, both is fine. The color of stools keeps varying from green to brown to yellow, sometimes golden yellow. But unless it is totally white or it is red color, all other color of stool is fine. Then about the vomiting, they complain. So what we explain is that when you have a baby who is feeding, so their uh, food <coughs> pipe we swallow the food pipe uh, how, how, how we swallow the milk it goes through the food pipe that is what is called in medical terms is esophagus it joins the stomach and then baby what happens is there is an esophagus and stomach junction where we have a wall so even if we stand on your head your food content from stomach will not come in your throat but whereas in babies these walls are not developed so sometimes babies milk which is there in stomach regurgitates and comes through mouth so that's why we do proper burping after every feed allow the baby to burp to get the air out of the baby's stomach for 15 to 20 minutes so that the baby doesn't vomit. This is very important. Then uh, another thing which parents ask is how many times baby should pass urine. So every day baby should pass clear urine like water color six to eight times. This is very important. Bathing of the baby is one more, one more question they ask. So we tell that newborn babies when the baby is just born, you should not do head bath or tub bath. You should just do sponge bathing to first seven to 10 days. And after that, the once the cord falls off, you can do the head bath or tub bath, alternate days with sponge bathing. These are the things. Again, skin care is one thing which they commonly ask. We tell not to do too much massaging and all and don't wash the baby for a very long time. More than 10 minutes of bathing is not good. That makes the skin dry. So these are the common questions which parents ask. Wow. wow. That, is... that was a, that that was was... a total... Total response, overall response that anybody could get. Wonderful. I think great. Marion, please. Yes, that was very, very good. Um, I appreciate yes. that and very concise and went through all those major things that parents do ask. Then near the end, you mentioned about uh, the rubbing, the massaging. And that leads into my next question. 
So some people believe, they used to believe that you brought the baby home, you put it in, in its bassinet, or that's what we call it here in the U.S., and you just don't have to pay attention to it uh, unless it cries and you check if it's hungry or, or the diaper needs to be changed. I mean, they don't realize that this time is important for interaction, smiling at the baby, singing to the baby, talking to the baby. And now there's even some programs that are advocating for what's called floor time, where you're laying the baby on the floor and you're doing these activities. Speak to us on the importance of these activities. So what happens is, uh, one more thing, uh, let me tell you. So when baby is small, especially when the baby has not learned to walk or crawl, that time now baby needs 100% attention of yours. So oftentimes, this is also one more common question. This is related. What happens is uh, whenever you put the baby on the bed, baby will start crying immediately without any reason. So what happens is, see, if you see in nature, other animals, their babies become independent very fast. If any uh, giraffe baby you see or any other animal's yeah. baby, immediately after birth, they can walk, they can feed, they can do a, almost half of their care on their own. Whereas human babies are not like that. Human babies, they grow over a period of time. First year, they cannot walk. So after one year only, they learn to walk independently. So what happens is nature has designed the baby's brain in such a way, it needs to be uh, aware that somebody is touching or somebody is nearby the baby to care for the baby. So that's why we do always what say we say is you either have to hold your baby in your lap or you have to cushion the baby in the clothing so that the baby feels comforted and taken care of. The moment baby is actually feeling that I am left alone, the baby will start crying like anything. The reason being the natural protective reflex is alerting the baby that you are in danger, nobody is protecting you. And mm -hmm. because the baby cannot walk, so then the brain is even more alert. So this is kind of a nature's design for human babies till first year of life and especially in the first six months, these babies are very, very alert about if somebody is around them or not. The moment they feel that somebody is not around and taking care and protecting them, they will start to cry for attention. This is very, very important. So always either you have to take the baby in your lap while sleeping also or be near to baby in skin, in skin to skin touch or you have to swaddle the baby in clothing such a way that baby feels cushioned. I hope you got this right. That, that is awesome. That is um, very important to know. But what about the, so, now moving on to like the floor time, the encouraging so, movement. Now, now let me come to other things. Please, so, uh, uh, yeah. interaction. so baby baby's interaction is very important for few things. One is the sensory development. Sensory development is baby has all the senses like what we have. Eyes, which tries to focus and uh, recognize objects. Though it is not fully matured into identifying objects, but they can see. Then there is hearing, there is a brain which is take, uh, receiving a lot of information through the surroundings. So these things, skin which is very susceptible to touch. So touching the baby, playing with the baby, giving gentle rhythmic motion to the baby, uh, movements for the baby and talking to the baby. Even you can do imaginary talks with your baby, which is very pleasurable for parents because babies learns to smile after two months. Uh, what is called as a social smile. So smile means baby will smile back. How we walk across the road and we see, see each other and smile back. Similarly, baby learns this skill at two months. So whenever the baby becomes two months, baby will learn to smile back. The moment you smile at the baby, baby will smile back. So that is very important to note. And then when you start singing, talking to baby, baby also will try to mimic your actions. Slowly, yes. slowly, baby's speech will develop. So these are very important. Now floor time, what happens is the baby learns to hold his head. So when the baby is born, the baby's head will be either this or that. So they cannot maintain a stable head posture. But after two to three months, they learn to head stabilize their head. So the head becomes strong. They can move their head around and they gain some control of their head. So what we call is head control in medical term. So this goes on to develop by six months, but very early in two to three months, they have this head control. So to increase the head control, sometimes we need to put the baby on the floor, on the tummy. So that is what we call tummy time for 15 to 20 minutes, almost like once or twice in a day, you put means baby's head will become very stable. So baby will look around and baby can a little bit relax on the tummy. These things are important. Yes, they are. And um, I work with moms and uh, dads and infants and 
teach them how to do these things. One of the things I found interesting is that when you speak to baby or sing to baby, they can hear higher pitches easier than the lower pitches. And that is why when we sing to them and parents, you know, they sometimes feel uncomfortable with that, what we call parentese. But when you're going, oh, baby, look it. And you're talking like that, they can hear you better. Um, and dads don't get discouraged because sometimes when you're in there with this voice, they really can't hear you. So um, if you want to just be silly and don't worry about your masculinity there, talk in a higher voice, you know, and just get their attention and make those words. They might not understand them yet, but they do understand the facial expressions and the intonation. So if you're singing to the baby, I don't want to change another diaper. They don't know what you're saying. They don't know that that's something you don't want to do. They just hear, I love you very much because I'm paying attention to you, you know? And yeah. parents need to not be inhibited about doing this with their babies and singing. And you don't need to, you know, find songs Mary wrote or someone else, just make up what you're feeling and say it, this this has so much. Um, I love that you mentioned the learning to smile and a lot of parents have become familiar with the term mirror neurons now and understanding that that's where they start to learn. So singing games about those facial expressions is too, you know, like I'm smiling at the baby, I'm sad, you know, they start to pick that up. Do you uh, subscribe to that Dr. Gupta? Yeah, yeah, so they, they actually, what happens is the baby's brain is developing. Slowly, slowly, they, what they do is they recognize their care, caregiver's voice. So after six months, once the babies had, had grown a certain, uh, certain amount, after six months, they will recognize by voice that it is your parents' or mother's voice. And they will uh, like uh, have a special response for you. So somebody who is taking care for the baby in a regular way, baby will react to that person in a different way. And baby will look look for protection from them. Whereas if they encounter a stranger after six to seven months, they will start crying. They will start to be reserved. And that continues till two to three years. Uh, sometimes children who are very talkative and uh, very naturally, very active, energetic at home, the moment they come into clinic and uh, they become very silent. So then yeah. I have to bring up so many toys and make them feel comfortable and enjoyable and they make them understand that this is another uh, another place where they can enjoy and have fun. So this is very important. So interacting with children is very, very important because that helps in the, them getting confidence in expressing themselves. And children are very expressive. If the children are actually allowed, they are very, very expressive and they want to uh, say everything, uh, do everything in their own way. Yes. Now, someone had asked about um, with COVID, when you have children um, that you're working with, maybe they are in a, um, a child center because mom or, and or dad have to work or go out and have to stay with someone else, or they're there every day and the person working with them has to wear a mask. Um, is Someone asked, is this um, affecting language development, neural mirror neural develop, development because their face is covered? Do we need to be concerned about that, the masking in front of the babies? See, this one is something we are actually uh, thinking that it might happen. But see, I see children who have been born in COVID times. So somebody who was born around 2020, uh, early part of 2020 or late 2019, these kind of children are now two year old, right? So we've been facing COVID since December 2019. We know COVID term. And actually in India, it started somewhere around January 2020. So almost two years are over, exactly two years over now. In Jan 2022, we are here. And many children are there and they are actually doing quite well. Apart from the older ones actually have got more affected. I don't see any speech delay or any problems in children who are very young. Rather, it has become a problem in children who are somewhere around toddler age group or preschool age group. They didn't get exposure or freedom up to interacting with their peers. So their social interaction has become a problem. They become isolated. They're more attached to the screen. They are playing games on laptop. They are doing uh, all the things on mobile, but they are not interested in other people, which has become a major trouble for them. So because what happens, I have seen so the parents, both the parents are working. So both the parents are working. They are staying alone. 
because of the covid many times maids are not there and they are busy with the house, household work so they have not got enough time to interact with the child play with the child and child has found a second parent in the mobile or tv screen or laptop and then the child has become totally addicted or kind of attached to those things and lost the social skills as not interacting not speaking much and very difficult to come out of those things this is what has happened but i have not seen pulsy speech delay in babies who have been uh, young so they are doing quite fine basically they are not supposed to interact with other children so they are not deprived that's that's good so i i have a, a question uh, not related to covid uh, that's very nice information that you gave doctor but this is related to the brain development of a toddler or maybe an infant so when does this happen when does See, the brain, brain development, development which is the most important development which is the which are the most important years of a life of a human being with respect let to the me, brain uh, let development let me come to uh, something which is how brain development happens so it is a very vast topic but let me put it in few small words yeah. so what happens is brain starts to develop very early in the embryo stage that is in the womb in mother's uterus only the brain starts to develop and at time of birth brain is already a kind of uh, one third of its like is quite developed already so what happens is the brain grows very fast in the first year so brain size will be 33 cm at birth and by the end of one year it becomes somewhere around 42 to 44 cm so 90% of the brain size growth actually can happen in first 2 to 3 years okay and by 5 to 6 years babies gain their adult head size so whatever the brain has to grow in size in the structure it develops in first to 5 to 6 years and that's it so a baby's size head size at 5 to 6 years is what they are going to have till their whole life almost okay so what happens after 5 to 6 years is the cognitive function the intelligence the analytic brain the experience this maturity the self control these kind of behavioral patterns develop in the brain after 5 to 6 years but the brain growth primarily happens between first 1 to 5 years only and most importantly the brain growth happens size wise in the first year of life the brain never grows as big as fast in the first year than uh, in any other year than the first year so first year is the most important time for brain growth and that that is the uh, major uh, growth time yes and that is why mm-hmm. even at even when the baby comes home with the parents from the hospital it is it is time to start singing to that baby rocking that baby talking to the baby um you know doing things to try to get the eyes to start tracking and focusing and it's important to start even in those first couple of months and i think that based on what you said before dr gupta the more you hold them and do this the stronger their confidence comes because they feel like they are safe and the safer they feel the quicker they can focus on other areas of development if a child doesn't feel safe then their development gets delayed because the brain is focused more on survival than on um learning and growing so uh we had a question about you know as early as 6 months no i say as early as soon as you can um you know a week old yeah. you know start paying attention and um what dr gupta said before was so very powerful about that if the baby does not feel safe then it cries so one of the ways we build that safety is by the interaction and letting them know that we are here and we love you that prefrontal lobe that's all it's looking for right uh, do you love me are you changing my diaper are you entertaining me you know that's all they care about and um how hard of a job is that you know yes. to look at a baby and just say i love you i've been waiting for you i'm so glad you're here and um, it's as simple as that i mean as a parent watching or even a teacher that is a substitute parent so many hours a day if the main most important thing you could do with an infant and then a toddler is to let them know you love them what a great job description right absolutely 
So, Tool, I don't know if you want to say anything here. I know you've been very, very focused on um, the zero to three. Yes, yes. No, I've been listening to both of you because I think you have more exposure of working with infant and toddlers. Um, so one more thing, doctor, I wanted to ask you is that, you know, see, we have also been uh, meeting a lot of parents of, uh, you know, toddlers of the age group of two to three. And when they come with a child, we find that because we have already uh, educated or I will say there are a lot of children who have grown in our preschools for the last several years. We feel that there are a lot of there's a very big opportunity where the parents are not educated how to stimulate child's brain development when the child is at home in their care. Because of the change in the lifestyle these days, you know, with the phone coming and digital and parents working, working from home, the, the, the quality time spent with the baby has reduced drastically, which is somehow, I feel, is leading to a little delay. There is no problem, the little delay in the speech development and the physical development of the child or the social or emotional development of a baby when this should have actually developed to a certain level when the child was three years. And when we talk to the parent and we tell them, do you talk to them? Have you been talking to your baby? And we got some really surprising answers that she didn't knew that, you know, talking to a two year was very, very important and engaging with them, taking them out, you know, showing them the world outside was very important. So this is something, uh, you know, do you have anything to say on this? So what happens is I can actually, I interact with many kind of parents and I am actually a person who gets very close to parents and children and feel what they are going through. So what I feel is what happens, there are multiple examples. So let me start by a mother's example. The mother actually has two kids and they used to live in US for some time back and now she has shifted back to India. And uh, one is five year old, another is three year old. And both the children are actually very active and she had to quit her job because he thought that babies are not interacting. She's not finding enough time to interact with the babies. Baby's speech is becoming slow. So she wanted to play, pay special attention to their children. And there are many parents actually who have now become uh, very like guilt conscious that they didn't give time to their children in early phase. And now the child is not interacting, not uh, mm. making much uh, time for them and is glued to the screen. Feeding has become a big problem. Children are not eating well. They are just glued to their skin. They just screen means uh, this mobile phones or computers and they are enjoying that time there, but they are not eating whatever the mother or parents are trying to give food. So this has become a major, major problem in long term. And the other problem which is there is, yeah, like you said before, now there's nobody to guide them. The parents, young parents, especially those who are in their early 20s or mid 20s, they are not understanding as to how to take care of baby. For everything, they become nervous. And then they are very, very anxious that they have gone and done something wrong. And, and, and this has become a problem. So now after the lockdown and last, uh, like previous times, I didn't see that many cases of speech delay in children. But now I'm seeing many children have become uh, very uh, delayed in their speech or speech is abnormal. That is because uh, I figured out many parents are not having the understanding of how to make the tech, uh, child talk. They're not spending time. So what I advise them is to read to the child. Read a story to the child at bedtime. Morning, you take the child for a walk. Take the child out or in the terrace or in the corridor. Even if you are following isolation, you isolation means since you are not going into public gathering, but you have your own space. You have your garden. You have your terrace. Even the ro road, which is free of traffic, in your lanes, you can travel with the child and show them the world. Show them that this is a bird, this is a tree, this is an animal. So you be... Spare some time. You are not working a shift more than 12 hours or 8 hours or 9 hours. So either you have time in the morning or you have time in the evening. So if you have morning time, go for a morning walk with your child. Show them the world around. Let them walk freely. Let them kick a ball. You play a ball game with them in the outer world, not inside the house. Yes. Okay. You play on the terrace. You play in the corridor, in the balcony, in the garden of your house or garden of the society. You go out, get them the fresh air, let them see the environment, enjoy the fresh air in the outside environment. The second thing which I have taught them is they should now become friends with their children. You have to, if you want a child to be open to you, 
and child to be expressive you get to the child's level don't try to control the child child yes. come up to you and tell whatever he wants to tell or behave the way he wants to behave and you have to become a child with the child make friends with them and then see how the child will follow your advice and child will follow your behavior but unless you get to the child's level the the level of understanding the level of communication the child wants to make if you can't go there no you cannot take care of the child so in my clinic also i never treat children like a patient i always treat them as friends so i talk to them in that way i play with the toys with them so that they feel comfortable in my presence unless they feel comfortable in my presence i would not be able to assess them they won't enjoy the time in clinic most of the children who are coming to me for the first time they are scared but over a period of time i build trust that they will enjoy the time whatever time they are in my clinic i keep kept a aquarium i have kept a plethora of toys in uh, graphics images and uh, wall stickers to let them enjoy the time in the clinic and most of the children are very happy even the parents give me review and feedback that children are wanting to come to me my clinic and telling them that the doctor is very nice so these things actually plays with children no matter how big we become in our mind for children we have to become a child that's a very important statement and i love how you step away from the clinical um work you know like parents think well i'm going to the doctor and we're going to talk about shots and nutrition and instead you're saying go outside take a walk read a book and those things are not things parents expect to hear from the doctor um you know and that is what is really going to make the difference and makes there less of a need for some of the other stuff because in the long run they'll be healthier uh i there's a very interesting video which i was seeing today about the brain development of a baby if you don't mind it's just a 2 minute video i would like to play it it's a 2 minute video definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. if it's that simple for parents definitely play it yes because these kind of things uh, they would like sure let me share the screen Someone had written that um, infancy was not my favorite part of parenting. That's kind of sad because it's such an exciting part. Actually, I, the infancy is the best part. Actually, I, yeah. your baby is your doll that time, so you can have a lot of fun with them. So actually, I have a lot of fun with kids. So I actually enjoy uh, kids, small kids coming and playing with them. Uh, I enjoy almost with every age children because for me, it is what I need to do. Yes, so important. Um Can you can you see the screen? Can you yes. it, Can you see the screen? Yes, let me see if I can play this video. Let's see. A child's experiences during the earliest years of life have a lasting impact on the architecture of the developing brain. Genes provide the basic blueprint, but experiences shape the process that determines whether a child's brain will provide a strong or weak foundation for all future learning, behavior, and health. During this important period of brain development, billions of brain cells called neurons send electrical signals to communicate with each other. These connections form circuits that become the basic foundation of brain architecture. Circuits and connections proliferate at a rapid pace. and are reinforced through repeated use our experiences and environment dictate which circuits and connections get more use connections that are used more grow stronger and more permanent meanwhile connections that are used less fade away through a normal process called pruning well used circuits create lightning fast pathways for neural signals to travel across regions of the brain simple circuits form first providing a foundation for more complex circuits to build on later Through this process, neurons form strong circuits and connections for emotions, motor skills, behavioral control, logic, language, and memory during the early critical period of development. 
With repeated use, these circuits become more efficient and connect to other areas of the brain more rapidly. While they originate in specific areas of the brain, the circuits are interconnected. You can't have one type of skill without the others to support it. Like building a house, everything is connected, and what comes first forms a foundation for all that comes later. All right, yes. So, so I just showed a small video because, uh, yes, mm, Dr. Gupta, yeah, 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 tell me. So, this video, I, I was just going through um, the internet and I saw this video on something called pruning. So what, what, you know, came to my mind that we as parents or young parents or parents of toddlers do a lot of work and research the whole day. We spend almost four to five hours making the food for the child. What nutritious food I should give to my child when he's a six month old or a one year old or one and a half year old. I'm talking about not infants, but the infant has grown and now he's a toddler, maybe one year old, but the parent does not spend that much amount of time, energy and effort on the intellectual or the brain development of the child or stimulating activities for a child. But this period of brain development is very, very important when they should be doing some activities, some scientific based activities. And what I found, unlike in India, in our country, in the US, UK, Australia, Canada, there are a lot of infant and toddler programs which have very, very powerful scientific based evidence backed activities for infants and toddlers. You know, their mother comes in these like Marion herself teaches infants. What is the age group, Marion, that you teach mostly throughout your last 30 years of your 40 years of experience? What is the age group that you've been teaching? I just want to when I first started, the parents that would come to me were mostly um, two and a half to five. Now there was a shift of more getting into preschools earlier. And now I have mostly six months to two and a half. And then they're anxious to get them into a preschool, early childhood development um, and you know, hand that over to um, somebody else because they're worried that they're not doing enough. Um, and so it, now it's more more young, uh, younger children. And I teach for Johns Hopkins, all children's um, zero to three um, music therapy once a week. And so somebody just commented, I think it was Debbie Clement, uh, that we do a disservice to make parents think that it's all fun and happy but it's real work. Yeah, it, it is real work. But it. I also think that that's the mindset with any job. If you approach a job with, oh my gosh, this is hard and I don't enjoy it, then it's going to be harder. But if you look at it and think, you know what, this will pass. This baby might be colicky, but I'm going to survive because it's important for this child. You know, it's not the easiest thing in the world. It isn't, but it is the most rewarding Thing in the world and as much as it can bring you some difficulties it can also bring you a lot of love um but yeah younger younger and younger they're coming the parents because they're not sure what to do and as you said dr gupta some of them are feeling guilty that they're not doing enough what am i missing what else should i be doing so, um, so there is there is a there is another thought uh, that I want to put here. There are a lot of women who are working and they leave early in the morning, come in the evening. You know, when we try to somebody tries to tell them that you should be doing these activities, you should like what Dr. Gupta said, you should take your child out, you should talk to them, you should read to them. There are so many things that you can do to stimulate the brain of that little one, but they are busy in their life they have to work you know then the parents comes and says no you know what do you want me to do you know this is the way i've been brought up and i'm an adult i'm very successful today you know i can't spare that time but i feel that that it 
just requires those five minutes of focused effort every day with the toddler where you know there are some activities which can stimulate the mind or there are those activities which you can do at the comfort of your home you don't have to go every anywhere you know you can just take the baby out take them for a walk show them everything tell them about everything whatever you are doing throughout the day just keep talking to them keep reading the books loud there are so many things are there but the only thing is that parents spend a lot of time which i feel on the nutrition of the child giving the right food you know preparing them every half an hour you know putting a lot of powder and then mixing it and giving to them but hardly some time on the intellectual right yes what do you say what do you say marian and dr sandeep uh, so uh, just just because i'm talking about an intellectual right free free chose it's a a kick out of this as we say in america uh finds it entertaining but yeah i actually have a song about taking your baby out for a walk and talking to them about the things you're seeing um because i think that every single point dr gupta makes is um is spot on and and i have written songs that go with those of course and um i i think that that kind of leads into the next question that we had for today and that yeah. is that what are the difference of the stages of the development um you know we 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 know that we need to give them this attention and then what's the difference between the attention for a newborn versus an infant versus a toddler before they turn into those preschoolers you know they all all the stages and stages have um different needs but every single stage first has the fundamental need of you love me you are taking care of me and then we build upon that so for the different stages dr gupta i'm sure that when you see a 1 year old you have a different um thing you're focusing on than when you're with a 3 year old yes so for a newborn babies what i teach them is so once you have breastfed the baby or fed the baby make the baby sit in front of you and hold the baby's in support and talk to the baby sing to the baby do burping do the gentle burping you tap on the back with rhythmic motions but at that time should not become mechanical you just don't focus on burping burping should go on the one side and you speak to baby you tell whatever you want your feelings you have have for the baby whatever you want to express to the baby you want to teach something you want to talk anything you want you can imaginary talk also so i do a lot of imaginary talking with babies one one small thing doctor i'm sorry i'm interrupting you i have spoken to a lot of parents and some parents say that when a child is 6 month or 1 year old does speaking telling you know singing is the child learning anything absolutely child oh, child yes. is learning and that is the base of the learning actually yes. see, when you are speaking to baby baby is seeing your voice and mo motion of the lips and tongues so that motion and movements he learns baby learns and moreover the your voice gets resi registered in the baby's uh, brain and hearing gets stimulated so that is see speech comes with hearing if somebody is not able to hear he cannot develop a speech yes so somebody comes with a speech delay as doctors first thing we test is the hearing whether the hearing is okay or not if the child cannot hear he cannot speak so it is not that if the baby is not able to express in a certain way that doesn't mean the baby is not hearing see baby from the very birth birth time only baby can hear your voice and it expresses in different way so baby's expression over a period of time changes like i said newborn baby they will feed they will sleep they will poo and peep and then they will be like that only but newborn babies also try have certain reflexes so they will search for the breast so they will search for a cushion where they want to be comfortable in a soft environment that is newborn baby sometimes babies after newborn period like somewhere around 3 to 6 months they learn to smile back the moment you smile the baby will smile smile then baby at 3 months last learns to coo so they make small small cooing noises they will make the noise by 6 months they will do blabbering ha abba baba la la like that they will talk by age of 1 year they start telling one word with meaning ma baba papa dad daddy 
like that they will tell one word with meaning so this speech development is a process and it starts from the very time of birth so definitely you should sing to your babies you should sing lullabies you should sing rhyme you can tell stories you can do different kind of voices you can make uh, like a conversation with the baby and baby will slowly gain lot of things from that first of all like marian is repeatedly telling no whatever you speak when you spend time with the baby baby learns that you are loving them and loving is equally uh, like it is proportionate or synonymous for them spending time with them the more, the more you spend time with them they realize that you they are cared for they are looked after and that is what baby need awesome. baby spell oh love t i m e that's a, a yes. good quote that i saw and i, I you have I a do. song for this uh, uh come on of course i do yes <laughs> um i do a workshop for uh, on infant toddlers um because i did a curriculum for kaplan learn every day and um they use a lot of my songs and so i do a workshop called tapping those tiny toes you know and it's just about um all the little things you do that can make a difference and and using all these little words that later will become part of their vocabulary and you can get you know a baby is going to develop language because you're speaking to them the more you speak to them the earlier they speak and they did that big study like years ago um with the children that came from households of infants and toddlers where parents spoke to them a lot versus the families where there was not much speech and the children that come from the families that talk a lot to infants wind up with children that speak earlier and also become earlier readers they become better communicators all around so again i go back to what i said about you know the thing with the 0 to 3 you know the more you talk to them and interact to them and let you know you care about them the more successful and more of an enjoyable let's not even worry about successful but an enjoyable life they will have um and again what a great job description interact and let the baby know you love them and keep doing all the positive enforcement things including the nutrition the exercise getting them out in the sunlight getting enough sleep and hydrating them those five basic things that every human being needs for survival and you don't wait till the baby's like okay now the baby's walking so let's get on that you know no you start as soon as you can so um i i would like to know what you would like to say in closing and wrapping everything up unless we have people who have questions more um on this topic i think we probably could go on for ever here one one, one thing i'm just noticing sorry at all but about someone oh it was pretty put up that we need more tools and less toys that seems like an important thing with children parents i'm sure i think dr gupta you probably get people that come to you and say what toys should i buy what should i hang over the crib for to stimulate the baby and i think the best thing you can hang over the crib is your face but uh you might have something to say about that no no you are absolutely right so what happens is sometimes babies will play with the food they will play with the clothes they will play with something else which they are not supposed to play with but they will not play with the toys because that is what is natural for them but basically it is about you being with the baby i know time is a very uh, uh, scarce resource in our times and this age but see even with the lockdown it is kind of both ways it can give you more time you have at least 8 or 9 hours of working and after that there is lot of time right and you cannot go outside so better spend with your baby because that is your bundle of joy that is the angel you have waited for so long so that that baby is actually looking for your attention and the moment you go near the baby baby will play with you baby will pull your nose pull your hair pull your clothes ha huh? <laughs> baby will do so many things actually baby will spit on you so it is it is really fun to be around babies so that's why i chose this specialty because i really love and in my training period also i was one of the persons who used to spend lot of time playing around with the babies just like that 
so it is it is actually there is nothing better than a baby smiling at you and having a nice time with you so you spend that time so like you said baby's love is equal to time that is the time so the time you spend with your baby is the best moment in your life and it will never come back let me tell you as parents you will never get the time again when your baby is a baby when your baby is small and there's it, it's in your hand it this time will run away this time will never come back you won't have this moments again in your life so it is a most precious thing more than anything in your life you won't feel the joy and then the taking care of your own baby with your own hands and spending quality time with ba your baby that is the i think the priority it should be your most important priority okay so try to bond with the baby as a friend and be at any stage of your baby when the baby is a very small cute fellow that time also and when the baby learns to crawl and walks and then runs this all times you have to be at the same age as the baby you become a baby with the baby and then have fun and this is the most important thing in uh, your life i think this will give you the more uh, more joy than any any anything in your life profession money career people all this will come and go but that your baby is baby for only one time in your life and then baby will grow up so this yeah. is most precious time in your life and spend it with the right uh, amount of attention to your baby that i think this is my concluding remark you have that time only once in your life to spend so much uh, in joy with your baby and they say that there's a three most important times of day are when the child first wakes up when you return from work they return from school i guess in infancy when the child is waking up from a nap and then the last 5 minutes before they go to bed and so those absolutely, three absolutely. times of day are the ones that they really really get the most out of your attention um and i love everything you had to say today um dr gupta one one last question for dr gupta uh about covid is it something to be scared of uh, for small children i am not talking about infants i am talking about a smaller age group of the 0 to 10 years i will say or 0 to 6 years or you know what should parent what is your advice last advice for them should we be scared should we keep our children inside or you know is it really causing that harm because we are not seeing it anywhere but you are treating uh, children for covid i'm sure they must be covering whoever is getting so what are what is what is the current as a scenario especially in bangalore and india which anything that you can advise to the parents before we conclude okay. so let me be very realistic about it so uh, yes. let me first be realistic and then i'll come to practice points so realistically in the first wave children were hardly affected second wave we got children affected and those were not mostly acute infections there was something called multi inflammatory syndrome with covid misc or poly inflammatory syndrome so that was after covid two months three months later children got sick and in 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 good centers none of the children actually had a very bad outcome everyone survived and they well were well taken care of and they, they were good so now what has happened in third wave is children are affected they are getting cough and cold fever and they are getting mildly sick but they are not getting hospitalized they are not requiring oxygen they are not requiring icu so there are chances that children will get affected but it is not serious or life threatening first of all second thing is because it is not serious shall we not take precautions absolutely not we should take all the precautions every precaution that you can take wear mask take vaccines avoid public gathering in this time of covid spread don't go for travel these things you should do wash your hands maintain good hygiene these things you should do because this is social discipline this is social behavior which we should follow for others also because suppose a child gets infected and he is not suffering but he can give to a 60 year old grandparent who can suffer and can have serious consequences because of this illness so we need to protect ourselves and our children as much as possible by following a covid discipline that is very important but at the back of the our mind we should remember children are not getting severely affected and from god's grace we are not having a uh, serious admissions or icu admissions still now in this wave third wave or say omicron surge due to the covid the children are mostly right. safe only 
one small fraction of children who are having unfortunately some chronic disease like a chronic heart disease chronic lung disease some neurological problem and immunological problems these kind of children actually are coming to hospital whom we have to sometimes admit and take care of them for few days in icu and most of the time still recover they still recover okay. actually i have made a series of video on children on covid there are 8 to 10 videos yes. on yes, on sir. different aspects of covid care in children right from the mother's breastfeeding and covid how to prevent how to treat when to do tests in a children for covid there are many videos and i would share with in the platform if needed you can go through my youtube channel and find those videos and they'll be uh, giving you a good understanding as to what is happening to kids in covid times and what all you can do to protect as well keep your children safe during the covid times great i think fantastic it was a very good 58 minutes of the show marian anything that you want to add i am just very grateful that dr gupta is part of this group and um agreed to come back on because this is very valuable information and i think that it's important that we hear it from different people you know um from a pediatrician from a neurologist from a teacher you know from a college professor and to hear everybody saying the same thing should reinforce what's important and the piece that dr gupta adds is the scientific part of it you know a long but but science with compassion and i really appreciate that with from you dr gupta that you can tell that you truly are passionate about what you do so the the information you give is is valuable but it also comes from a good emotional point so i thank yeah. you for that and i love to have you know i love to encourage everyone to um follow your page use the resources that you provide to us as members of this group that's so valuable like what you can get here so stay in touch with him also take a moment to thank him for coming on today and sharing this um he unfortunately uh, has children that he's uh, treating right now with covid and has parents that i'm sure ringing his phone off to say is it okay the fever just went up is my child okay you know um should i come yes. see you but instead he's taken this time to talk to us so i thank you for that we respect that we know that You probably have some messages. Yeah, every Wait. day I reply almost like fifty messages on my phone. There is uh, how many? So, how many? Yeah. So, so as you start being a community pediatrician, you take care of children. Then it's not one-time interaction you will have with parents. Parents will be using you as a friend and as a guide and as a philosopher for everything. They will seek your your advice from very minute things to every serious things. whatever the anxiety and stress they have no they kind of kind of try to share with me and i i have i feel like okay this is something which we owe to them because it, as a parents they are very helpless when they don't get somebody in the course of time to share their feeling sometimes it's just sharing they are not looking for advice just they are sharing their concerns so something it is just their feelings which they feel they are not even uh, asking for advice they are just say, sharing their feelings as to what they are going through what is happening to them so it is very important to be a very good listener in especially being a pediatrician because see parenting is a very emotional thing it is not just like any other care it is a emotional thing which everyone goes through when they are taking care of a small baby and the, the, the emotional uh, things come from heart so you have to have a conversation from a emotional point of view and understand what the parents are going through just being objective is important but then still still you have to understand the human part of the things also Thank you, thank you for that. And Atul, amazing. So, so friends, we had an amazing time hearing Dr. Gupta. You know, whatever he had to say about infants and toddlers, and also, you know, what all beyond his scope of work, whatever he, you know, value adds to parents and how to interact with parents. There were so many beautiful ideas that he shared with the community today. I thank you, doctor, for taking your time out, your precious time out during this difficult time when you know I'm sure you must be getting a lot of parents interacting with you. 
calling you and you are also attending the hospital icu care at this time thank you so much to come on the show we are really thankful my sincere thanks to marian also for joining us today i also thank all the viewers on facebook for taking their precious time to watch this show live our best wishes thank for you for the next week thank you marian thank, 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 thank you for conducting the show in such a gracious way and i hope it is very useful for parents because see they need time to time guidance support and all the care they need because see parents also sometimes are very lonely they cannot share this yes. feelings that they are going through many people uh, actually don't understand what they are telling so it's a emotional state and and experience experienced caregivers like marian and all they are doing a great job for the pa parenting community thank yes. you thank you and um everyone watching thank you we uh i put up dr gupta and you can look through the um the um comments later i'm sure you're going to share this to your page because i encourage you to do that because this information needs to meet reach more than just our global group yes. um and we need to get it out there so a lot of people are writing thank you they're grateful to you they appreciate you so again can't say it enough thank you so much thank all you. right take care bye bye bye, -bye. <laughs>